Thank you, Eitan, for those really, you about Eitan, for those really uh, moving remarks. Ahead of, uh, of this meeting, I browsed through issues of the journal Science from 100 years ago, from in the spring of 1923, and it surprised me to see how much there was in those pages about longevity and extending life. No issue of the journal was without it. An article called The Increasing Length of Life said flatly, quote, the total life expectancy at birth in the United States is now 55 years. This could be raised to 65 years, end quote. A review article called The, Bio the Biology of Death, drawing on, quote, a wide variety of sciences, including cytology, pathology, genetics, and statistics, opens with the observation, quote, that all cells are potentially immortal, end quote, and then wonders why, in light of that fact, aggregates of cells, like human beings, ought themselves also be immortal, or at least potentially immortal, if only we knew more about how to maintain ourselves. At the very least, the article said, quote, advancements in physiology, pathology, and hygiene should take a high position in our effort to lengthen human life, end quote. Science reprinted in full a speech given to the American Association for the Advancement of Science by Archibald Byron McCallum, who was the founder of the National Research Council of Canada, and the speech was called On the Urgency of Research on the Great Portal of Disease of the Body, arguing over long pages that finally, 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 in 1923, everything was lining up. What we know about physiology and biochemistry, pathology, immunology, and diet, it was all lining up that it was now so close that every man and woman, McCallum said, of science could feel it, the time when, quote, a regimen might be devised that would delay in the individual senescence and even death, it may be indefinitely, end quote. And of course, none of this should have surprised me. Nothing is more characteristic of modern science than this Promethean impulse to take each new discovery, each new instrument, each new procedure, each new theory, and immediately to ask, how can this be used to improve people's lives, to extend people's lives, to diminish people's suffering, to slow and stop people's decline? And a hundred years is a blip in human history, and there is no need to tell this group that the total life expectancy in the United States was raised to 65 years and then to 75 years, and that here in Israel, as we saw in Asher's slide just a minute ago, it's not very far from 85 years, which I notice some of you seems like far too small an accomplishment, because in this group I know that your genius is only exceeded by your ambition, but for me, all I have to say by way of welcome is that there is something so inspiring in your undertaking, in your belief, like those of by now generations of scientists who came before, that knowledge can be and must be transmuted into well-being, into human thriving. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, as I said, Yuval Khan, and thank you, Michael Kleiner, and thank you, Asher Salmon, and thanks to all of the remarkable and generous sponsors and partners in this conference. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped with the administration of this conference, including our, our own um, Eti Appel, who was wonderful. Thank you most of all to Dr. Ilya Stambler, my friend and colleague and constant inspiration for more than a decade now, who willed this conference into being with pure determination, energy, brilliance, bonami, and charm. Thank you. <laughs>